I'm always amazed that you can tie so many things into something as simple as this tree and what it does. People don't do that anymore and that's why it's fascinating is how do people all by themselves without Mr. Google to tell them uh, figure out how to do that. So. There still aren't a lot lot of practitioners but a lot of that is because the art is just resource and time heavy. So the art of kappa making involved the materials and plants that people use to make clothing and blankets and any kind of dressings and things that they used in their daily lives. In Samoa, it's Siapo, in Tonga, it's Ngatu, in Fiji, it's Masi. It had their own names for the plants, the material. But you would find people who didn't stop making it, who were still being taught ancestrally, who knew the meanings and the ancient meanings of the designs they were using. Whereas in Hawaii, we completely stopped doing it by you know, the 1900s. The men in your family would have to grow all the trees. The women in your family would all be manufacturing the, the bark cloth. There would be other people who were woodworkers who would make the tools. So there was a lot of people involved in kappa making. First it starts with the trees. You've got to grow good trees for that. And the tree we use is paper mulberry. It's a Brosinidia papyrifera. In Hawaii, we call it pauke. You are trying to grow it so that it has this really nice, clean bark that doesn't have scars on it. And then you've got all the tools that need to be made. That's a whole other thing because those woods that they use traditionally are very specific. And because nowadays a lot of those woods are rare and endangered, we have to use alternate woods that act the same way. When you go to the beach to gather those stones, you don't just pick them up and throw them in the trunk of the car. You, you gotta ask them if they wanna come because now they're gonna spend the rest of their life with this going on their back. So you have to, like all arts, you have to develop a relationship with your materials, whether you're carving stone, whether you're painting. You have to still have this sense of, you know, that Hawaiian way of gathering, of the purpose of why you're doing it, of what's happening. Even in a modern time, there's still a lot of traditional culture that by necessity is a part of this art.